Welcome into the CHGO Bears podcast, where is another Wednesday, which means we have a lot of weird news to talk about. Adam Hogue, Mark Carmen, Greg Braggs Jr. with you. Guys, how we doing? Good. Mark's working. Just, you know, <laughs> thinking about, I'm doing some extra work right now on Omar Young. The Bears' new running backs coach. I like. I really am excited about what Omar is going to bring to the table, and perhaps he will be able to recognize that Phil Snow and Omar Young are going to lead us to the promised land. I have it on good accord that Phil Snow endorses the Omar Young promotion by Matt Eberflus on a coach that is on a staff rather that has in a culture that there aren't any problems and everybody is pulling in the right direction and the bears are two and two in their last four games everything's great how about the two and two part of the press conference we're two and two we we they're were like, well, in well, that one game they're like well, <laughs> well how come we in that one how come game? you don't want to focus on or think about what happened before that because today's a new day <laughs> new day right. i'm we, really proud of how we handled this firing of another coach ignore we all, came all those together. failures because right now we're doing great yeah I, we know. I'd have by been the, like, "Well, you're zero and one in the last week." Yeah, uh, I, I would say that if we're just talking about in the moment, you're zero and one today. You just fired another coach. That is not a good plan. So I don't. You know, hey, David Walker, just. Him not being on the staff, I don't think that's the end of the world. NFL, guys move along. Here, not for long. Running's best coach is gone. New one in. Who cares? Let's move along. But I think it just can underline a little bit about Matt Eberflus, if I may, Hope. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I take a little bit of a swing here? Would you agree, and, and Gregory, would you agree that, that the Flus is the coachy of coach, 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 coaches? Like, he knows he is a coach's, 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 coach. Yeah. Right. So, and from what we've gathered... I think he wants to be. Well, okay. Go ahead with Okay, fair thought. enough, fair enough. Uh, you know, he's worked his way up through the ranks. He's, 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 we are where our feet are. All his statements, his hits philosophy, all this. He's, he's coachy, coach, coach. That's fine. Okay. Now, from all we've gathered, correct me if I'm wrong here, the problems that happened with Alan Williams and now David Walker, these were not coaching issues. They were other issues. Yeah. Right? Okay. So Man, I think Allen had some coaching issues. We might add that, 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 <laughs> we're not even talking about the fact that Deontay Foreman, who after looking like the greatest running back of all time, is somehow getting as many carries as Roshan Johnson. I'll just say week. this much so a true coachy coach, coach, coach. Yeah. Like a Bill Belichick. Coach. My coach? guy Matt Painter, Purdue. Yeah. They don't walk to the presser and constantly gloss over the problems. They address them. Okay, fair fair enough. But my my, my point is that when he went about interviewing his staff. It just seems like the coachy coach, coach, coach was just looking in one corner, and that was how he focused, and that's how he made his evaluation. And he and it, there's a there's a certain level of blinders on that to me don't just matter on who you're hiring, but it's also on how he sees things. And so I just to me it's more of a concern that that, that there's a there's a there's a tunnel vision here that is problematic. That Matt Eber, if I'm Matt Eberflus, I am I am thinking about how I can improve on that aspect of my coachy coach life. All right, let's table that for a, a couple minutes here. Um, it is a Wednesday, so we have Brian Baldinger joining the show as he does every single Wednesday. We also got some exciting news here at All City, Baldy, be, because uh, we announced this morning as a company the new national. Network on top of all our local markets in in Chicago and Phoenix and Philly, 
uh, in Denver, of course. Um, and we have part of the new national network, a new all NFL show, which Brian Baldinger is going to be Let's a go. part of. Baldy, yeah. really excited about this. No, uh, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, we uh, we're taping our first show uh, today. Uh, I think it drops at I don't know five o'clock today or something like that. But uh, Lane Johnson from the Eagles is joining us, kind of previewing uh, awesome. the game with the Cowboys this weekend and telling some good fun stories. So we will have guests, you know, players and coaches every single week on. But uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Obviously, there was you know a ton of news with the Raiders and you know. Uh, all the trans transactions yesterday with the trade deadline. So, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of like the gift that keeps on giving here. Yeah. And Anthony Gargano is going to be the, the co-host of, of that. And he's uh, one of our uh, outstanding guys out yep. there. In Philly yeah, I, with I won't PHLY. take it. I won't take it personal that you didn't, you know, ask me on the expert meatball analyst for your first yeah. ever show. There it is. There's the cause. There's the cause right there. <laughs> I think Lane Johnson. Gets Lane Johnson, yeah, I, I think, Lane takes Johnson. precedent. Baldy, yes. did uh, when you got hired by Brandon Spano for the All City All NFL podcast, did he do it by giving you a fortune cookie and saying you're the guy? Ooh, I've heard that story. I don't know the whole backdrop to it, but I heard that today, and I thought, well, that's a cold blooded way to kick somebody out the door. But you know, I, you know, I, it's interesting. Like I was just re, just rethinking all the Raiders coaches that have been fired. You remember? When Al Davis fired Lane John, uh, Lane Kiffin, do you, any of you guys remember that? Well, we were uh, oh Lane Kiffin. Lane well, Kiffin, Kiffin got tarmacked by USC, but year. how did Davis do it? Yeah, go ahead, Baldy. I don't remember this off the top of my head now. No, it's, it's unbelievable. So you remember the uh, back when we were all in school, we used to have the opaque projectors. You know, they had the opaque, and you would draw. You you're right there, and it would project onto a big screen. You know, it'd be a dark room except for the light on the opaque projector. Well, Al Davis brought out an opaque, like an, an opaque projector, and he started writing all the issues, chapter and verse, that he had with Lane Kiffin. He didn't leave anything out. And so, I mean, you know, this the way that you kind of fire coaches probably isn't lost on Mark Davis, you know, watching what his father did over the years. Whenever I saw the opaque projector busted out at the – in the classroom, I just that that meant that was time to go to sleep. <laughs> Lights <laughs> off, nap time. Yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> uh, Baldy, it's been an interesting morning here in Chicago, <laughs> as it tends to be. They had to uh, fire another assistant coach for inappropriate behavior. David Walker out as the running backs coach. Um, on, on the that's sort of burying the big trade they made yesterday. And, you know, from a football perspective, that's what I couldn't wait to ask you about this morning. Just how do you feel about Montez Sweat? They, they, it, it's interesting that Sweat goes for a second-round pick and then Chase Young goes for a third. And so the question here is the, in Chicago, it's like did they just overpay again for a guy that they don't even know is going to be here next year? The same thing sort of happened last year with, with uh, Chase Claypool. Yeah, well, they got fleeced on Claypool. I mean, that, that, that was just bad. I and mean, that, that was just bad. Bad scouting. And whoever did their homework on them just done no Chase Claypool. That was that was horrible. I mean, I, I texted somebody in Pittsburgh. Like, they were so happy, you know, that somebody would take them off their hands. So, that's that. But, you know, Montez Sweat's a different guy, though. Like, I like you know, he's a much better player than Chase Young. He's been healthier. Like, he's it's, gonna hard, it, it's hard to find Montez Sweat in the draft. There's not a lot of them. You know, he's six six. He's two seventy. He can run. He plays hard. Um, he's their best defensive player. Uh, I like. I understood Chase Young. Like, okay, he's had injury history. You, you could say he needs a better arsenal of moves. There's things you, you could pick apart with Chase. Um, and so, you know, maybe San Francisco can unlock those things and just let the talent run with Bosa out there and some other guys because they got to they got to improve that front. But I thought, you know, for a team that was led in sacks by Jaquan Brisker last year that's being led by T.J. Edwards this year with two after eight games. I thought the addition of Montez Sweat, you can – I think he's going to be a cornerstone. Now, you got to pay him, and I don't know how much you're going to pay him. But, you know, they paid two inside linebackers that I wouldn't have paid. But, if you know, if you're going to pay these guys, pay a guy that can at least line up and play for you every week. So, I mean, look, Baldy, I get it. They need Montez Sweat. They need him desperately, and perhaps he's going to – 
make as big of an impact on the Bears defense that uh, Ryan Poles is hoping for. But I, I just asking you, let's put you in the GM seat. You're giving up a high second round pick for a guy that you know is going to have all the leverage with you in contract negotiations who may or may not be a free agent. Um, I believe in Montez. Like I think like I was just talking to him a couple of weeks ago before the Eagles game. Like I, I think he's got the right approach. And so I, I just know how hard it is to find these guys in the draft. I mean, you can say, okay, second round, we can go find this pat. Okay. All right. Sh- show me that guy, you know, show me that guy. There are not many of them that come out of the second round that can be an elite player. Like I, I think that, I think this is a cornerstone player. Now, I don't know what the contract is you're going to pay him. I mean, it's, you know what Nick Bosa just did and all these defense linemen that got paid this year, they're all $100 million plus. Quentin Williams, you know, you go through the list of all of them that got paid. Um, I don't know what he's going to command, but you're right. He's got the leverage in the deal. You're, just, you're going to overpay him, and, and maybe that's okay. Uh, you know, listen, they need him, so they're going to overpay. That's how I look at it. Like, you're, you're not getting a value on this guy. It would be unbelievably shocking at this point. We're in your position, right? Which is not ideal, but, like, you would probably would have overpaid him in free agency. At any rate. Well, I, well I, mean, you could, I mean, you could go back and revisit the same argument you guys have been having since the draft and just said, Let's just draft Jalen Carter yep. with the ninth pick. Like, he's the best player in the draft. Just go draft him, and he's going to make everybody around him better. Because that's what he's doing in Philadelphia right now. Well, and that's my concern, Ball. They still don't have a three technique. No. You got you can't have a defense. You can't run that defense without a three technique. I mean, I'm I'm friends, you know, with Warren Sapp. He's the ultimate three technique in that defense. But you know, DeForest Buckner, you look through the guys that are three techniques in that style of defense. Like, because you can sit back there and play all the zones you want. If your front four isn't affecting the game. Up front, the quarterback has time. Well, Joe Burrow's going to kill you. You know, like you you need a three technique that's just going to be massively disruptive. Well, and, and well, and maybe this is where this all ends up going um, because a lot, some of the discussion here in Chicago this morning, Baldy, is, well, what does this mean? Is this like uh, an endorsement of Matt Eberflus as the head coach? Because what if they have a new head coach here in a few months and they're changing schemes? Now, I kind of feel like Montez Sweat can – can be scheme transparent and he's not signed for next year as of right now. So, you know, whatever, maybe you cut your losses with the second round pick, but maybe the fact that they haven't addressed this three technique is a good thing. Cause maybe they're in a three, four next year for all, we know. no, I'm being serious. Like they could be in a completely different defense. No, no, you're right. Because you know, you see good players get caught up in coaching changes and, you know, front office changes and styles change. You know, and so the style change of how you want to play in this player's effectiveness isn't the same. You know, and if the Jets were playing a 3-4 defense, I mean, why would you pay Quentin Williams to play the nose tackle $100 million? You know, I mean, it, it, it's perfect in the, in the scheme that they have. So you're right. If you have good players get caught up in scheme changes and their value gets diminished. And then next thing you know, you've you wasted a lot of money. Uh, you know, going back to Montez Sweat, to me, so if the Bears, you know, have to try to tag him, doesn't that give Montez Sweat incentive? Yes, he has a lot of the leverage in the negotiation room, but players don't want to play on a franchise tag, right? That's a lot of risk for the players. So isn't there some incentive for him to find a contract so he's not playing on the franchise tag? Well, you're just going to piss the player off. Like all these guys, you know, just get ticked off. I don't care what position it is when they franchise tag them and all the, you know, all, all the franchise tag is doing is just trying to get a free year out of them, you know, at the salary, whatever, you know, the, the going rate is. They're just trying to get a free year to figure things out. That's not telling the, the, the player, they're not telling the player, we really want you. And that's all the player wants is I, I all I want to know is that you covet my abilities and you're going to compensate me for it. I don't care what the position is. And so when they franchise tag them, they're saying, well, they're not really interested. You know, like, what is my incentive to give them the best possible year? I mean, you know, some guys just play with that type of pride, but not all of them do. So my emerging concern on the Bears right now, Baldy, because, you know, as we're kind of looking at this, is Poles going to be here? I'm betting my life that he will be. Okay, fine. And I guess, is the coaching staff going to be here? We don't know the answer to that. But it just seems to me, if, if you don't 
have a direction, a style of play, what you're trying to do. Justin Fields to Tyson Bajan, completely different guy, or an entirely new quarterback. How can a GM draft players? We're talking about just flipping the defense now. How can a GM draft players and say, this guy is going to be able to do this for us versus, like, I mean, you could be going for possession receivers. You could be going for speed guys. You could be go, There's a million different ways to do this. But if you don't have a direction, then how do you even do anything other than just throw darts, or darts at a board, which it feels like the Bears are doing to me? I agree with you. I totally agree with that assessment. And all you have to do is just look immediately to the east of you in Detroit and seeing that they have a direction. They have, I mean, it's clear. Now, I don't know how that's going to finish up this year. But their talent level is they have drafted well and they have developed their draft picks, which is ultimately what you want to do. But they have a direction, you know, and you can find cornerstone players that are young on rookie contracts. Whether there's Jameer Gibbs or Aiden Hutchinson, the rookie right guard that played the other day, played really well in Colby Soresdale, a fifth round pick. Like they've got direction and they know who they are and they just keep they're just going to keep adding pieces. You know, they, they got rid of good running backs to DeAndre Swift, but they're like, Jameer Gibbs is a better player. He's younger, he's healthier, and he also could catch the ball in the backfield like he did on Monday night. So I, I, I applaud what Detroit is doing, but I can't, to your point, I can't say that Chicago is doing that right now. So with the Raiders, you know, losing a coach, and in, in here in Chicago we're thinking about a coach, and then in Michigan – University of Michigan having their issues. Is Jim Harbaugh a good option for either team? Because I know for me, it's a dream scenario for Jim Harbaugh to coach the Bears. That's a pretty good dream. That's a pretty good dream. <laughs> I would trust Jim Harbaugh to coach my, you know, my T ball team. I just I like he like he's psychotic in a good way. In the way football coaches, Ditka, these guys have to be a little psychotic. But I believe in – because, you know, the thing is about Jim, he's a, and Dan Campbell's like a little dis, a little bit of a disciple of him. Like, they just know the vision of how they want their team to play. They just know exactly how they want it to look. Like, Colin Kaepernick, like, was his guy coming out of Nevada. We're going to run the pistol. We're going to run the pistol formation, and we're going to pound teams, and we'll get Justin Smith out of Cincinnati, and we'll just – we'll the best inside linebackers in football – and we're just going to take them in a phone booth, and we're just going to beat the hell out of them every Sunday. And that's what they did. And they they turned that thing around in two year, uh, in a year. He did it at Stanford. He's doing it at Michigan. Like, I would trust – I don't care what it takes. I would go get Jim Harbaugh if I had that ability. Do you know him? Do you have any relationship with him? Do you think he'd want to come back to the NFL? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, he wanted that job in Minnesota bad. Yeah. <laughs> Until, you know, they decided to go in a different direction. Um, so you might be competing against him. You know, if uh, Minnesota, look, I'm not going to argue with what Kevin O'Connell's doing. Um, it's it, They're turning it around right now. It's pretty good. We'll see what happens. But if I had a chance to get Jim Harbaugh, I would get Jim Harbaugh. But, if, you know, look, if, you could, if, if he's not available – if I don't know what's going on in Michigan, like who knows what's the truth is. We'll, we'll but I mean, I, I'd be, I, I would, and I'm not here to advocate change in Chicago and run Matt Eberflus out. Let, let's see what happens. But there's some other coordinators out there that are pretty interesting to me. Well, and, and Baldy, I don't want to put you in a position where you're advocating for a coaching change, but you do talk to a ton of people around the league. You're, you're traveling every week into these games. Like, what do you feel like? the perception is like when the bears come up in conversation or if you're talking about the bears on the new all city NFL show, uh, or the all NFL show, I'll get it right. It's day one. Um, like how would you talk about what Maddie Refluse has done here and in just like how he's being viewed or is it, or is, are they just not, no one talking about the bears because they're just not relevant kind of. Yeah. I would say that they're not relevant. You know, because, you know, <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> no, but, but, you know, I remember, um, in fact, you know, uh, I was just talking to Anthony Gargano yesterday and, you know, it's, it's November 1st, right? So when I did games at Fox, John Madden basically drove our bus. Like he was the leader of the whole franchise, the entire network. John was in charge. And he used to say that the season never begins until there's a frost on the pumpkin. Well, it's supposed to be like 27 degrees. 
in New Jersey tonight. There's going to be a frost on a pumpkin tomorrow. The season's oh, we, begun. We and basically, I'm coming back to your point, but, yeah. you know, basically, November 1st, you've basically separated contenders from pretenders. We kind of know who they are. And, you know, we nobody's taken – the Bears might win games in the second half of the season. Uh, teams do that. But nobody's taking the Bears seriously right now. And so – Maybe they're going to win some games and put a streak together of games. But, you know, if they, if it happens, nobody's really going to pay that close of attention. They they had a chance, you know, against the Chargers to sort of make a statement. You know, outside of the first play uh, to Darnell Mooney, like they didn't do much the rest of the game. So they had a chance on stage to have a lot of eyeballs on them and a bad, you know, a really wishy-washy Charger team ran them out of their gym. So, that was an opportunity to kind of catch some eyeballs. All of Chicago's buried Tyson Beige into career backup, Baldy, except for me. Right here, I still believe right. 17's got a chance. Are All you right. with me or are you with the rest of Chicago? Uh, I go by what I said two weeks ago. Like, he looks like a guy you want on your team. I don't know if he's going to lead you, you know, to uh, the promised land. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, all right, well. I got one more Harbaugh question. You do? Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, Baldy, what do you think about the fact that he drinks milk with his steaks? I, could never I think do that's that. weird. That's very I, weird. I never, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, like, you know, I love Jim. But I remember one time the 49ers were playing a game out there at Levi Stadium, and I was doing the national radio call, and I just happened to – and the 49ers were staying in a hotel the night before a game. So it's like 6 in the morning, and I'm wandering down the lobby – to go find a cup of coffee. So I'm up. So Harbaugh, Jim's wandering around the lobby too. So I, I see him. He's like, what are you doing, Bobby? I'm like, ah, I'm doing a national radio call here. I was just looking for a cup of coffee. <laughs> so he says, just just go behind the curtain there and just go get yourself one. We, we, we're all set up for breakfast. So I uh, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. So I go back there. I see Jim Tom Sula. He's the defense line coach for him. So I'm pouring a cup of coffee, and I'm talking to Tom Sula. I don't know if I should, I, I, I don't, maybe I shouldn't say this. So anyways, so like 10 minutes, I'm shooting a breeze with, with Tom Sula. I'm drinking a cup of coffee and Harbaugh walks in and he looks at me and he goes, what the hell are you doing back here? And I'm like, I thought I, I could get a cup of coffee. This is for the players only. Get. Then he chases me out of there. I'm like, man, you know, like, God, coach, 15 minutes ago, he said it was good to come back here and get a cup. So I don't know. I just remember that story. That's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, I, I for, for, for the record, I, he can, I, he can be in the locker room for the Bulls championship, but right. he can't have no, <laughs> the curtain. no, no way. coffee. That's awesome. All right, Baldy. Well, uh, can't wait for the drop of the new pod later on today. Yeah. The all NFL show will be listening. And, uh, of course we'll talk, we'll talk to you again next Wednesday. Okay. You got it guys. Take care, man. All right, Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL. And again, uh, the, the new Twitter handle, by the way, uh, for the NFL show is all city at all city underscore NFL. So if you go find that, you can um, find all the information on how to subscribe to our new all NFL show, um, which will cover the entire league for you. Really excited about that. Also, as always, excited about Goose Island beer, Chicago's beer since 1988. Right now, they got Oktoberfest, they got all the beer hugs, they got 312, they got full pocket pills. That's the everyday beer, what the Goose Island brewers are drinking. You can grab ultra-fresh brewery-exclusive beers at Goose Island's original brew house on Clyburn Avenue in Lincoln Park or from their tap room on Fulton Street in Westtown. Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's Beer. And when you get your tickets, the only place to get it is on Game Time Tickets. You want to download that app right now. If you're going to see the Bulls or the Blackhawks or the Bears, or if you're going to a concert, or if you're going to, uh, you know, see Greg Braggs in his latest play, you want to get the tickets at game time. You want to tell people about the play that you're involved in? I was in a play once, but go ahead with I, your ad read. I, I, I would love to hear about it at another time. Uh, listen, download Joseph the- Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Coat. What was your role? Second grade. He was the coat. No, I was in, like, the kid chorus. There you go. My hey. sister was in a lot of plays growing up. I can sing a lot of plays. Now go ahead with your ad. Read. Download the Game Time app, create an <laughs> account, and use the code CHGO. As you see, Herb Howard is fired up, and he's a Game Time app guy. Uh, Twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account again. CHGO. 
Put that in there. Get $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guarantees. You will love the app. I play on it all the time. It's uh, it's where I get my great value. Looking forward to upcoming Bulls games. Uh, and also, as we uh, bring Herb on the show, $50 Super Chat from Seth Crane. Thank you, Seth. Seth, we really appreciate you. Hey, y'all, how difficult is it to handpick coaching staffs that may not have a relationship prior? Example, hiring Johnson from the Lions as head coach and Denard Wilson from the Ravens as defensive coordinator. I, I mean, we've anybody, seen it here in Chicago. Matt Nagy didn't know Mark Helfrich. And that didn't work out well. Quite frankly, Ryan Poles didn't know Matt Eberflus that well. They were connected through their agency. By the way, hello, Herb. What's going on? I missed you guys on Monday. Yeah. It was like 80 degrees in L.A. The sun was shining. Yeah, I'm sure you missed uh, us. The beach was, was, was beaching. I'm sure you're just so happy you're the, back the, in the snow. It, it, it was. I, I missed you guys so much when I was in, when I was in yeah. L.A. on Monday. Gosh. <laughs> That's not Jeez. nice. I don't know. I, it was, I, I missed you guys terribly. I couldn't wait to get back here, and I heard it was snowing and 40 degrees. Like 20, 25 degrees. Yeah, yeah I, can, all right. Couldn't believe I was out in L.A. Well, we're, we're happy you're in here today. Um, <laughs> What's going on with your football team, Herb? My football. Now they're my football team. Yeah, well, uh, yours been your, and, they've, they've yours been and your Braggs foot, and Hoax. They've I'm been out. your football team much longer than they've been mine, but I don't know qu- what's going on with them. his quarterback, our football team. It continues to get stranger and stranger. That's all I know, right? I, yeah. I, I, I woke up at like 6 or whatever, and I see – I, actually, you woke me up, Hogue. I, I've got a few of you guys, not you two guys. But oh, I got, I got few, notification status? I got a few of you guys on my notifications Let's Twitter. Let's go. Right? That's and big. so uh, my phone goes a little dum dum And I was like, what the hell? So I, I look, and it's it's Hogue tweeting at like 7.01 in the morning. And he's like, yeah, David Walker's. I was like, what is going on? So I go to like John Z and, and, and Fish, and I'm like, what is happening? And I'm like, this, is, this, this season just – and even by bear standards. Yeah, that's uh, your is, tweet. This is strange, even yeah. by bear standards. It's yep. just weird. It's bizarre. There's a couple of things from this press conference I want to talk about with you guys. Okay, because I think there was a couple of moments. Um, first of all, the most obvious one that I, I think everyone's probably talking about correctly is just the head coach talking about how outstanding the culture is. Our culture is awesome. He, had, he used outstanding, awesome, and there was another one in there, yeah. too. So there was a couple really good follow-up questions. Um, one was uh, he was asked, okay, so you're holding everyone to a standard. That's what he kept talking about. We hold guys to a standard. David Walker didn't meet the standard. David Walker no longer works here. Okay, please define the standard. Right. And, and here's what was interesting because he, 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 he said it's really clear. It's really clear. about the players, is in my opinion. Yeah, in terms of how we treat each other with respect, being on time, working hard. That's the first thing I laid out to everybody in the building. Once again, this is me interjecting. That is the minimum of being an NFL anything. Or in high school anything. Yes, right. be on time. <laughs> uh, that's the standard that we operate in. And then we have standards on the field for operation in terms of performance. Your standard of performance on the field is based on effort, based on focus, based on intensity. We measure every one of those every single day. Hits, 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 hits. I added that part. In practice and in the games relative to the player's performance. But, yeah, it's very clean cut. Never once in this answer does he mention how you treat people off the field, no. which is what David Walker just got fired for. That's clearly an issue. And what I also found interesting, not only that he went to standards of, of the players, he talked about on-field performance and all that stuff. He's like, we're talking about your, we're talking about your running backs coach. He's yeah. never been on the field. What are you talking about? Um, but – what I also found interesting was how people in the press conference, the beat continued to lump in David Walker's situation with Alan Williams' situation. Yeah. And never once, never once did Flu say, no, those are two completely different situations. Alan Williams was health and family, and he left because of health and family. He never said that. No. He, <laughs> he, he allowed those two things to be lumped together, which only confirms what we already know. Yes. It wasn't health and family. It was something else. And I think that will still come out down the road. But the fact that you never were like, yeah, 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 I was lumping in, you know, conduct detrimental or whatever with David Walker with health and family. We said it was health and family. He never, he never made that distinction. Yes. That's a good catch by you. And, and – let me interject some of my own reporting here because I want to make it very clear. I think these are two separate incidents mm-hmm. that are – or cases maybe is the better way to say it. And I'm, Not that it's like a court case or anything, but just 
because I don't think they're specific incidents. I think right. they're situations. Let's go with that. Two separate situations that are similar-ish. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So they don't have anything to do with one another, from what I understand, but the, a, the, conduct, I, the conduct of what we're talking about here is, and, and, and that brings up questions, which is like... About oversight. And one of them is a coach that you he worked with, Flus worked with in Indianapolis very, very closely right. in Allen Williams. So um, You gave him your baby. Like, yeah. Flus is a defensive guy. When you bring, when you can come head coach, whomever you bring in to take care of your baby being the defense, you have a lot of confidence in that person. You have a ton of confidence in who they are and what they are. Which brings us to another thing that came up at the press conference. I'm forgetting off the top of my head who asked the question, so I apologize. But whoever asked the question about him being a CEO, mm -hmm. and if you cut out to be a CEO coach, I don't even think the answer really matters. I don't even quite frankly remember what he said. But what I'm getting at here is, isn't that kind of what feels like the problem here? Yeah. Right? Like I Absolutely. And this goes back to the idea of hiring guys who are being head coaches for the first time. There is just so much more involved in that. You cannot just sit there in your offense and scheme all week. That's not how this works. You can't just worry about football. You were at the top of the show talking about how football you have a football you have a football you coach this guy is. I'm sorry, man, but when you're the head coach, maybe even half your job is relationships, is planning, is all this other bullshit, quite frankly, that you have to worry about on a daily basis that prevents you from just being football guy. That's what being a head coach is. Yes. Like, even at the high school level, when I coached high school ball for six years, we used to always argue with our, co with our head coach and be like, yo, Stay the fuck out of our way. You do that GM stuff. You go talk to the AD. You go find some Nike or Adidas deals. You go do press conferences. You talk to the news people. And you put this whole thing together, and we will be here and we'll do our thing. Mm -hmm. But don't be – like. but part of his responsibility was making sure that he put good people around him to do their jobs. And I, that's when, – when, when, when they don't, that's on you. That's at any right. level. Right. Well, and that's what I'm saying is, like, obviously there's a failure here of the CEO role. I right. think, right? Well, and, like, meanwhile, on top of that, they don't win football games very often. He's been right. a better you, D.C. than a head coach. You can't, like, you can't blame a guy for what they someone else does behind closed doors. You know, like, here, if somebody here behind closed doors doing something, that's not on Jake. But if it's happening within the boundaries of where you work, you know, that's the culture that Fluce is creating. So if there's... If there's things that these guys got in trouble for that happened on the job, that is your culture. Right, I want to push back on you even a little bit there, though. Like, and I feel you if, if, if it's a one-off, right? If it's a something that's an outlier. But we're talking twice in, in, yeah, like in a eight month. weeks. You know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. this, we're not, like, eventually this has to be talking about a pattern of behavior or some type of oversight issue that says, okay, who are you bringing in here? That happens even if, you're the, if the players did this. If two or three of your players got arrested and kicked out, like, you'd be like, yo, the head coach is bugging. Right. Like, they could have got arrested at the nightclub or at home. Yep. But you, who, who are you bringing in this building? Well, I, I think to me it's – and from from yeah, the, that's an evaluation of character. Too. I mean, right. if 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 we if we if we're gonna keep talking about Jalen Carter lighting up the league in Philly, right? And he's not here because of character, but two of your coaches are already gone. Well, that that's another good point, by the way, because they didn't want to bring in Jalen Carter. At least it was theorized by the media and, and and fans and whoever that the culture wasn't good enough to bring him in. That's not which is a, which is an Probably indictment right. on your culture, but. You know, from the it's an admission that your culture sucks. isn't good. I still love that. That's yeah. still one of my favorite. Right. Things. I don't. I mean, I don't know if that's not why they brought him in, but maybe that's something. But but it's it's on the table that it was. the The thing is, look, I've I've talked to a lot of people around what's been going on uh, with the Bears coaching staff, and I don't have anything nailed down as to what exactly it is um, that I can talk about. I guess, but 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 the but from what I have gained is that. None of these issues that they, that they had with the defensive coordinator and the running backs coach were new. If 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 they had done their proper background, they they could have they could have figured out this might not be an ideal mm. hire. And you could do the same thing with the GM. Mm. Uh, you know, he, background on Chase Claypool. Mm. What? Uh, well, that was pretty. Uh, what Baldy just said, right? Well, like that. Just 
it was indictment on your scouting room. Like, apparently it wasn't a secret at all in the league that... Right, would have been Claypool. minimal background. Yeah. We're, talking, we're, we're not talking about... That's the other point here. It's not like uncovering some deep thing in, 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 in some cave in, in Botswana. Like, it's, <laughs> it's right there if you talk to Botswana. six people. Ryan Poe's write hey. this down. Yeah. If Mike Tomlin gives up one young talent... Don't you think yeah. you can fix it? Make well, a, do that. Make a vote. Hey, and maybe in a middle, uh, small amount of credit. At least they didn't. I, in my opinion, they didn't make the same mistake with Chase Young yesterday. Mm. You mean uh, Montez Sweat? No, oh, Chase Young. By oh. not trading. Oh, for oh, Chase oh, you, oh, Young. you mean? Oh, okay. I think so they you, corrected that by going after I the see, guy who I see. is more reliable, who is known as being a better teammate, who known as putting in the work every single day. Um, um, well, they underlined that, right? Flusted. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay. But I actually agree with it. And yeah. we can get to that conversation separately because I still think the, as much as that's a big trade, like, this is just not normal All right, so to have two coaches like this go down in the same. There's been differences. Like, who was the Dolphins coach a few years ago that got caught? Like, wasn't he, like, doing cocaine on his desk or something like that? 80s like, and 90s football. These yeah. things happen. Miami. You know, the, right. the, the Tennessee coach last year got a DUI the getting Zelda off the plane. Blanco. When they flew back from Green Bay, like it, it, it's it's not like the Bears are the only team dealing with you know assistants that have to be let go mid season for questionable behavior, but two in one season and the circumstances involved here, it, it's not. And and again, you're not winning football games. Winning heals everything, right? Just wait, win, wait, baby. We'll wait, be wait, fine. Wait, 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 though. They're two and two in their last four. Oh, there's that. Yeah, they're two and two, two, and, two and they and teams. they were in that one game. And we were in that one. game. They were in that one and game. And our starter's been out, and our backup won one. I mean, so he if dealt. I could attempt to play devil's advocate, though, when it comes to these coaches and the Claypool situation, which obviously are in vastly different circumstances as far as reprimanding, they did get rid of these guys. Right, so like you can say, oh well, you didn't know they were bad, but once they figured out whatever was going on, they got rid of them. I mean, I, I've I've followed plenty of college sports where guys can get away with a lot, and you'll never find out if about they're it. winning. As long as they're winning, exactly. So like these guys got caught. Yes, they didn't know about their character. I, people can hide things better than others. You know, Carm might have, you know, eight dead bodies in his closet. We don't know. I'm kidding. I'm just saying, like, you don't know people. Did you just shrug that? Like, perhaps? I mean. He's a, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you never know. I mean, just, so I'm just saying, like, you never, you, as much as, as, as it's easy to say, oh, the evaluation sucked, you don't ever truly know a person of what they do behind closed doors. And when they found out what they were doing, they were all let go. Chase Claypool obviously could potentially be, from what is going on with these coaches, a totally different circumstance. But once he became a problem in the locker room, they didn't let it drag out all season. They got rid of him, and that to me is is showing that they're willing to cut bait when it's necessary La too. I mean, that's the devil's advocate side of it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have a new hire at CHGO, and his name is Floos Jr., and I'd like to present to you Floos Jr., who uh, is is celebrating that you did get it done when... Yeah, I, it's just hard for me to be like, oh, how did you not know this guy? Like, okay, that's fair. I'm not saying that's an unfair question, but at the same time, to act like you you know everything about everyone when you hire them is uh, so naive. The so standard is what, the what standard, per, and when they don't meet that, we, yeah. we made a move. What percent of a pass are you giving them on it? 25% uh, pass? Uh, well, we don't know the circumstance. This is a lot of speculation. You don't know what they knew. And if they were hiding it, it's hard, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you have to be fair to let what they actually knew prior to. Let me ask you this, Braggs. Is this reflective or is this similar to the way that he's been with evaluating his own football team? And I'm talking about player performance, right? Every time he steps up there at a post-game press conference or yep. a Monday or a Wednesday or whatever, he's always, like, avoiding right. what we all see. We all watch the game. We all know this game. And we're like, yo, this happened and that happened. And he's like, well. Right. We, like, we're, we're getting better. And it's like, yo, slow down. Like, don't talk to us crazy. It becomes, it becomes a question of whether or not you are trying to protect your players or protect your staff in this instance, yep. or you don't know what the issue is. And it becomes a very, very blurred line where I don't know if he's trying to avoid telling 
the fans and the media what the issues are, or you are literally and truly blind to what the issues are. Right, like Valus Jones probably should be cut at this point. Last year, they dragged it on too long with how long he was returning punts. You know, like, it, and it, it came back to haunt them in games. So, that like, there is that evidence that, you know, they wait too long on things yeah. with, the, with the players. I mean, I'm not. Some, some of these players. I don't want to go down the Vela Jones Jr. road. I'm not as out on him as a lot of people are. I, like, I just don't ever want to see him return a punt. You want to give him some end around, some, I mean, some screens or jet sweeps, whatever. Too no, many they, little they sh- mistakes. They should give it to Trent Taylor. No, they should not, especially not if you got – Khalil Mack one on one with Larry Borm. That was complete foolishness. You're trying to drive the ball down the field. You go second down and you go Trent Taylor uh, end around or jet sweep right at Khalil Mack one on one with Larry Borm. Knock it off. Definition of being too cute. Last week, run right, run right, run right, run right. Victory. Second play of the game this week. Run left into their best player. With Trent Taylor, is this the first time he's touched the ball all year? Like other than other than fair catches, one I think he had one catch, in one of those games. Well, like how that is the definition of being too cute. Yeah, and uh, it would have been sweet if Flus got up there today. Was like, look, you know, it's rare to fire a coach midseason, but David Walker told us to run the end around (laughs) with Trent Taylor. And upon further review, it's on me for not having stopped that before the game. But So I have to look at myself. But the fact that he put that play in there, I have decided to fire. Just call it what it is. He's got one of the only position groups on the team that has performed well, and they've had turnover, they've had attrition, they've had injuries, and his his room continues to perform well. So it's clearly not performance-based. Just be like, yo, his ass tweaked. And we aren't going to allow that, so he's gone. <laughs> By the way, I am out on Bayless Jones for the record, and the last straw was that he likes candy corn. That Ooh, was it for me. Yeah, that was, that was, was tough. Pain. I don't hate candy corn. Running into the punt Sorry. returner. It can't be number one. It's not your favorite candy. It's not my favorite. I would never buy it or anything like that. But if it's candy corn is your I'm favorite hungry, candy, made, you don't like different. candy. You like eating candles. Yeah. <laughs> you nice know what's terrible? Wood. The worst Halloween candy? I don't know if you guys remember these things, but they came and just – Individually wrapped yeah. in like orange I don't even know what they're called the black. orange paper yeah. and the black paper. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Those things I don't even know what they're called. Those are the worst things ever. And if you give those to kids on Halloween, they should egg your home. Th- those were the things we called throw them straight in the trash. Yes. Well, they also look sketchy because they don't look like they're like professionally wrapped by a. No, real candy like somebody company. just grabbed some wax paper. Yeah. Like, hmm. <laughs> Here, kid. <laughs> my my daughter completely broke my heart last night. We were trick or treating on the first leg, and then her friend found her. Then she was like, I want to go with my friend Ugh. and left me in my giant Bowser costume by myself. You looked so good. You were sad Bowser? I was very sad Bowser. Did you continue trick-or-treating? No, I went home. <laughs> I went in my basement and pouted. Jenny's like, don't be mad. I was like, forget it. Well, my five-year-old daughter. Wow. Did, was some adult with your child? Yes. Okay, just checking. Yeah, mine just ran off. Well, yeah, my nine year old just ran off for the first off year. Off. I, we were five minutes later, we're like, where are they? No idea. <laughs> mine is nine. You know? It's like a dog. He knows how to get home. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. <laughs> I hope. Boys. Yeah. Way to go. Boys. Way to go, James. I'm proud of him. There well, was these soft ass kids, too. I mean, there were so many that didn't go out because of the snow. Back in my day. Oh, God. Yeah. Back in my day. I'm with you on the back in my day. Yeah. We were but, gone. There were gone. no cell phones. There were no uh, uh, share my location. We were just gone. We were outside, and your parents only knew if you were alive, when and if you came back home, or they got a terrible phone call. That's it. Like, we were outside. <laughs> now these kids, cell phones, and it's location sharing, and it's, no. You go outside, and you don't come back inside because you had, like, our parents were like, yo, ain't going to be no running in and out. Okay? So y'all doing all this running in and out. Next time you come in this house, you stay in the house. Okay, cool. You don't have to tell me that but once. We're back. gone. Yeah. Okay, we're gone, yeah. and we're not even staying out like, in the front or the back. We're going, like, around the corner, down the street. Like, we're yeah, gone. Yeah, my, my mom, who's been in the chat earlier, she, she used to say, get out, go play in traffic, was her line to us. Yeah. That's what she would say to us. Yeah. Yeah, it's good advice. <laughs> um, the other thing that's new that my wife and I were talking about last night that's totally different from when we were kids, these kids, they come in with all the candy, 
and they just like dump it on the floor. Yeah. And they start like swapping. Well, no, they're more so like throwing it at each other and just going candy crazy. Thing? Yeah, I would when, not. When be I was doing a that. kid, man, you protected your bag of candy oh. like it was yeah, gold. Sure. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I'm going to go find a hiding spot in whatever house I'm in, and that's this real. thing is going to be hidden where almost I can't find no, it. No, that's real. Now it's like they're just, I don't understand this. What happened to protecting. It was candy. good if you had siblings or friends who liked candy that you did not, and vice versa. Because yeah. then you could swap. Then you could do the trades and stuff like that. Right, right. right. You can give up a My second. red pillow in the chat said, Braggs has reproduced. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Be on the lookout. She's as crazy as me. Oh, this boy. man's an elite dad. One of my favorites. <laughs> crazy. I think he is an elite dad, and Addy is. Oh, I trust right. her. I mean, I'm a little She's concerned gonna, with today's discourse. He's. Making the Halloween about himself and not about his kid, but or it's but, from the me guy. But no, I can relate to what he's it? talking about. This from who, this from the guy who made all of Halloween literally about you. Everybody was you. I had nothing to do with that though. That You're was making just, great points here. That was why Herb's here. We bring him in because we need some great points just, every okay. once in a while on the show. All right, let's get. Uh, I really want to know about Foco. Ho, can you tell us about Foco? <laughs> I guess. I mean, I was kind of. He really he, doesn't want to talk about the fact that we exposed him. As a me guy, so let's talk about. Uh, he, he exposed, exposed himself. himself. That's yeah. true. At least he did that as he a forgot, me guy. Though. He meet himself. Yeah, he uh, forgot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Foco, Foco can be for me guys or non me guys, we guys, me guys, any kind of guy. Uh, also, women too. They have great, outstanding memorabilia, clothes, whatever you need, hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, everything in between for all ages. All types of people get fitted out the best sports of gear gear around. Set decorations right here in front of us. Every show, Foco hooks us up. We appreciate it. We want you to sh show them some love too. Check out Foco.com or click on the link in the description below for all non-presale items. Use promo code CHGO for 10% off. Who are the pretenders and who are the contenders? We're more than halfway through this NFL season. We know where the Bears fall. Um, but, hey, the future is bright, damn it. But DraftKings Sportsbook, more importantly, is still pumping out unbeatable offers every single game. New customers give it 5 bucks on anything. Get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Uh, get in on the football action. Do it right now with the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the app now and use that code CHGO. New customers, you get $5 on anything to get $200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code CHGO. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problems gambling. Calling 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort, Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles, Louisiana. 21 or over, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football term for eligibility and, and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. That's right. And uh, I also want to tell you about Fubo TV. Make sure you sign up at www.fubotv.com slash chgo. 140-plus live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. Stream live TV from any device. Watch the most na watch the most Chicago sports for the lowest price. Start watching immediately with a free trial today. No contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. 1,000 hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. Watch local teams while traveling. College football coming up here. Uh, starting, what is it? Is today Thursday? I've lost track. Today's, Wednesday. today's Wednesday. So tomorrow, got college. Mac games on you got Mac, Mac yeah, action tonight. We had some awesome action last night. There yeah, was some snow. snow. Was yep, another snow game. The got first snow Mac games. Action Tuesday games. Wasn't That's there right. like a brawl when the game was over? Uh, I, I didn't heard see about that. Snow brawl? Uh, snow yeah. Maction? Got to love it. That's how, why you got to have Fubo TV. You can watch all of this. NFL coming up on Thursday and Sunday, all this stuff. So watch your favorite college football and the NFL with Fubo. Go to www.fubotv.com slash CHGO to sign up for 15% off your first month of Fubo Pro. All right. We got a injury report for Wednesday, Who November is 1st. And, um, by the way, they, they did not practice today. It's a walkthrough, so it's kind of an estimated injury report, but it is the official injury report from the Bears. Jaquan Brisker, 
Concussion protocol, did not practice. Nate Davis, still dealing with that ankle injury, did not practice. Tremaine Edmonds, knee, did not practice. Justin Fields, thumb, did not practice. Eddie Jackson, foot, full go. It's encouraging. Uh, Braxton Jones, neck, still limited. Lucas Patrick, back, full go. Terrell Smith, still ill, did not practice. It's a huge blow for Terrell Smith. Guy was playing well, then he gets mono, and well, he's been out. The, the other aspect of that, too, is with everything that's gone on with Montez Sweat and then what happened with the coaches yeah. uh, this morning, the whole Jaquan Brisker thing has been s- swept under the rug and how they handled that. They mishandled everything. I, I wasn't – okay, so after the game, when he, when, he, when he gets dinged, right, he gets dinged on a two-point conversion. After that game – This is the Raiders game. It's the Raiders game. Yeah. Right? On the press conference, Flus does his press conference. I remember Jason Leisure from the Sun Times asked Flus, "Was it shoulder? Or was it head?" And Flus goes Flus, and he doesn't know whatever. Right? You leave out of the press conference. Everybody goes left to go back upstairs in Soldier Field to do their post game work. I always go right to meet with my camera guys. Go do my on field stuff. So I go right to go to the camera room, and as I'm walking down that way. Jaquan's just standing there. He's like standing there by himself with like a, a friend of his. And so I like Jaquan. So I was walking. I'm like, I'm like, you good, man? He's like, no, nah, I'm straight. I'll be fine. I was like, was it? Like, it was like your head? And he was like, I mean, yeah, but he's like, but I'll be fine. I was like, take care of yourself, bro. I just walked off. But they knew it was his head. Then he also has concussion history, like. So this this idea of illness and it's not I'm not trying to all I'm every they've mismanaged everything right we talked about the Allen Allen Williams thing they mismanaged that terribly if you were just gonna say health and family you could have said that the day he left but y'all took ten days to come up with a lie or whatever it was like that's foolishness every time something happens on this team Chase Claypool and whether or not he was told to go home or had an option to go home yeah he mismanaged oh, man. every single situation it's what is why? There's no reason for this. this is football. Things happen. He has a concussion history. He's ill. What are you talking about? Like Be- because they hired somebody who is straight awful at being the voice, the front man for the organization. It's awful. He left the he left the Tampa Bay game. Him and Eddie Jackson both left that Tampa Bay game. He Jaquan comes back later and all he was he felt sick. Yeah. What are you, well, and the well, Brisker thing just talking seems about, man. dangerous. To, to, I mean, well, right. to, to your point about Brisker, and I'm not trying to be the guy that's right about Brisker, and I hope that Jaquan Brisker can play football for a long time. I, I hope love he, Jaquan Brisker. I, I hope he gets healthy. Plays the game about, recklessly, though. Right. Well, not even that. I'm I, Maybe so. But I've been saying for a long time last night, because last year ended with him off the field for a long period of time, and then you're coming back this year, and then early on in training camp, the concussion popped right back up, but he was off the field for a long time. And I just don't think that if you're Ryan Poles looking forward, you can have any faith that he is going to be one of your guys that's going to be here. It's just the reality of what he's dealing with. These things don't get better. He's asked to play safety. He's got to come up and hit people. And it's, I just don't see this ending well. I hope I'm wrong. But like to me, like when you're looking at who are the pieces going forward, a lot of people say brisker. And I'm like – Dude's got some serious concussion issues. That's that's a big time problem, and 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 I, and I it's just, I don't know where do you go from there, knowing that if you're the Bears, I tend to think the same thing about him as as as, as being a potential building block for this team. But I'm in 100 percent agreement with you. He plays the game in the only way he knows how. It's full speed and it's violent. He does it when he doesn't have to. Right, a yeah. guy will be wrapped up by three or four people, and he comes in, boom, and I'm full speed. Reckless abandon is like, bro, you have to start playing with just a little bit more care and concern about yourself. Everything does not have to be a lights-out shot. It just doesn't have to be that way. I respect it, right? It's not that I don't respect the way he plays the game, but I just want you to be a little bit smarter so that you can get at least to a second contract, right? Your first rookie contract is not going to set you up for the rest of your life. But if you get to your second one, then even if you – leave thereafter you can be good for a business or whatever else is going to go on I just I, I want the kid to, to to think about that just a little bit and I asked him that earlier this season like are you going to change the way you play based off your concussion history from last year He's like I only know one way to play the game I was like Godspeed brother yeah the 
the lack of confidence too that Flew's had when he got up there on Monday. He's like, this last one, i am never seen this before. I'm going to try to explain it. I just find it hard to believe. Guys in the concussion protocol, even if he gets cleared, then he feels sick. How does that not ring an alarm that, hey, that maybe this will be related? Which makes me, and they're not that dumb, no. right? Right. So they know it's related. So then they, what were they doing? Fudging the injury report? I don't know. Like, but but the problem, and and I, that's no. not even an accusation because they have this independent concussion, right? Doctor, right? right. The neurologist, right. and it's almost become an out sometimes, because hey, I don't know if you know this, but doctors aren't always perfect, and they could clear him. Sometimes you got to use your own common sense, just like as a training staff, as a coaching staff. Hey, let's still protect this kid anyway. And especially if it's somebody who's got serious concussion history, who's now feeling ill because of it. I Look, I know he said they're in a good place. Uh, he said Brisker's in a good place. He said Tremaine Edmonds is in a good place with mm-hmm. his knee. They were both DNP. Some, on symptoms, the intro. some symptoms pop up later, too. Right. Yeah. And and the the stomach and nausea and all, that's always a thing with concussions. At first it's like this head, this loopy thing, but you're like, why does my stomach hurt? And it's just a part of concu- for whatever reason. I don't I'm not a doctor, I can't explain it, but there's a stomach thing that 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 tends to come along with concussions. And so you're gonna go that go that route and say, Oh, he's got an illness. No, man. Y'all did that in Tampa Bay. Oh, he his stomach was hurting. Braggs is looking on Twitter and he's seeing that uh, Jason Leisure and I'm sure a bunch of other people are reporting that uh, Ryan Poles is going to speak this afternoon. So we'll, so we'll hear from when? the Bears GM. Okay. You want me to text Le- tweet at Leisure when? <laughs> <laughs> Hit up Finley. Ask him. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm glad to hear that. The GM should speak today. I mean, he should, right, I mean, with the Montez it, Sweat. It just the Montez Sweat, but now you've he's had to He's got to address more now. Things, yeah. And that is the, you know, Check obviously the shame of that timing of that because the Montez Sweat thing is something that, you know, some Bears fans are excited about and others, I guess, are trying to, you know, look at what could potentially go wrong with it, and that's fine. But 2.30. 2.30. 2.30. Well. You want to end the show and get up there, Hogue, and fire some questions at Ryan Pauls? Run! That's w- there's way too much going on in my brain right now to try to process another change <laughs> to my schedule this morning yeah. or afternoon or whatever. Like, uh, but this just isn't normal. That's all I'm gonna say, man. And like, even yesterday's, tra- I'm trying to think of like talking to Baldy there. W- just the permutations of things that can happen here in the next few months. Like, okay, you added Montez Sweat. He's not under contract next year. He could be franchise tag, but you might need to tag Jalen Johnson too. Who's the coach? What kind of scheme are you running? And if you can't if you're unwilling to fire the head coach, which I sort of get this feeling that Poles might not want to fire him even though everything going on. GM might or the president might have to come over to the top of the GM. Maybe they're both out. So now what do you do with Montez Sweat? Why did you it, – I'm a new GM. I just got this new job. Why did this guy trade a second-round pick for a guy who's not on, you know, in, on, under contract? I'm out well, of breath. There's well, a well lot. To, to, Bra- to Bragg's point that I pushed back hard on yesterday, like some people outside of the Twitter world are, are looking at it that the trade for Montez Sweat was a confirmation that Ryan Poles is going to be here next year, which in my mind, again, that's crazy that I, I don't think the GM's getting fired, but you're just talking about it again. So, look, in an ideal world, if I was Kevin Warren and I was talking to my GM and I'm looking at everything that's going on here, going into the trade deadline, and I don't even know if this would be considered overstepping my bounds, but, what if, but if I was, I would have told him, look, this is what I want you to do. Get me as many draft picks as you possibly can. I don't care who's on. I don't care who's. I don't care. I, I, you could get rid of literally everyone. I want as many draft picks. I want as many swings as possible going into next season. That's what I want. Go do that to the best of your ability, and I'll continue to evaluate you the rest of the season. Like to me, that would have made a lot more sense than let's do a preemptive strike to try to get a guy and who we think we can sign, and we're not exactly sure but what. That's we're because have. he's going forward with Ryan Paul. Right. Right. So he's like, right. Ryan, whatever you think's best for the team. Right. So I'm saying if they were leaning the other way and I was and I was warned, I would have told him, get me as many draft picks as possible. I want to set up my next guy with as many picks as he can possibly have and let him turn it into whatever he can turn it into. I think that's very logical. I, I, I also, and this this is not a knock necessarily on Montez Sweat. 
played with Allen and Payne and Young on the same front as him. None of those guys are here in Chicago. None of them, right? You've heard the head coach talk about the three technique being the engine of this defense, yet you refuse to address it in any real way, right? You, you got Justin Jones there. He's a player in this league, right? He's not, nothing wrong with Justin Jones, but he's not a – he doesn't wreck anybody's offensive game plan. You got these two young kids that you hope can develop, and Pickens has flashed, and Dexter has flashed, and that's fine. But you bring in Montez Sweat to a, to a situation where now he is undoubtedly the best player on this D-line when he's always played with other great players. I don't know that you get the same production. So we put up these stat lines that he's done. He's got six and a half sacks, and he's got 11 TFLs, and he's got 19 pressures. and That's cool. That's cool, but when you're an OC and you also got Chase Young and De'Ron Payne, like it's, this isn't – it's not the same It's not the same situation. Right. No, right. but they, they've got this offseason to continue to build that, and I think the D-tackles, the rookie D-tackles, are starting to take another step. Uh, so there's – it's – they couldn't fill all the holes this offseason. So I like the move with the, with the preface that they have to sign this guy to a four-year deal. Uh, They've got – I mean, with what Baldy said earlier, it, uh, giving him a franchise tag is just going to piss him off, then you need to get ahead of this right now and offer him the money that – I mean, you brought him in, so that means you think that highly of him. So give him the money, sure. period. I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I don't hate the move either. I'm just saying in and of itself, I don't know if it's going to yield any fruit, right? You've got to put – Not initially. No, you got to – Yeah, you got to build, build this guys thing inside them. out. 100%. And so – Maybe Zach and, and Javon develop into what you hope they can be, but you pass on the guy that you knew was that. Yeah. Right? I, I think it's interesting, too, by the way. The I, I don't have a problem with it, though, because I, I like where Darnell Wright's headed. I do, too. too. Those, they're two separate things. I don't yeah. – like, I get they're always going to be linked, and it's, it's not Darnell's fault. And I don't always link them when I'm talking about it, but you did pass on the guy who is engine of a, of a, of a cover two defense. Sure. Well, and if, as we came up in the Baldy interview, if there's a world in which all of a sudden they're running three four defense next year because of a new coach, it's probably a good thing they didn't draft Jalen Carter. Her was really. laughing about that too, but I was like, "Man, we're really pulling for silver linings." We're like, "Well, it's a it's a good thing we don't have a three technique because we well we're that guy's rid probably, of the coach. that guy's probably good enough to play anywhere." Now, um, <laughs> also hold on to your hats a little bit because Jalen Johnson is currently at the podium at House Hall talking to the media after yesterday's events. Right. Um, I'm gonna quote some uh, of the reporters that are out there at House Hall, uh, Adam John saying that Jalen Johnson thought he would be traded yesterday after his request was granted by the team. Um, mm. Alex Shapiro from NBC saying Jalen Johnson is surprised he's still a bear. Thought he was going to be gone when he was granted permission to seek a trade. Mm. He's disappointed he still doesn't have an extension. Um John Z also saying Jalen Johnson did follow up by saying that he still wants to be part of the Bears long term. That's always been the case. Sean Hammond tweeting this quote from Jalen Johnson. There's a, dif there's a difference between talking and trying to work things out versus getting things done. Up until this weekend, nothing was done, and I wanted some different opportunities. So let, let me translate a little bit here and see if, if you all agree or don't agree. Jalen Johnson is very happy to stay here and be a bear, mm -hmm. but Jalen Johnson, very clearly, when you say the word respect, that means you want to get paid market value. There is not going to be any discount. He will do it here, but he's not giving you a Cole Komet, I want to be here, win a Super Bowl as a bear. He's, if you want to pay me what I'm worth, great, I'll do it here. If not, I live in California. My daughter's in California. There's 31 other NFL football teams. I'm a number one quarterback. I really don't care where I do this. I just, but I'm going to get paid what I'm supposed to get paid, period. I'm not giving you any discounts. So the Bears should know this. This is the same thing about just doing your research and understanding people and players. This is what this guy is. So if you're, if you're willing to pay him market value, then great. Pay him the market value and be done with it. If you're not willing to do it, then trade him. Let him because, be a 49er and call it a day. Right, because, because somebody is going to be willing to do it for him because he's a top corner and he's 24, going to be 25 years old. Someone is giving him that money. Right. So this is, this is the calculus for, for what he is. And the Bears, 
to me, are living in some okay, dream world that know, they're going to get some deal on Jalen. you don't know for sure that he's just asking for market value and not above it. A. B, you don't know what teams are – the Bears can't just, okay – we don't want to pay you what you're asking for, so we'll just get rid of you for anything. They it, told teams you can trade for him, but at this price. And to Adam's point from like a week ago, if the Bears lose him, they're getting a compensatory pick. So if the trade offers don't match what your compensatory pick would be, then you don't get rid of him and just take the compensatory pick. Yeah, but the reporting around it, Braggs, is that, like, that he was insulted by the offer, right? And so I don't I don't think they're offering a market value. I don't think they, they we want just to buy don't that. know though. He's also on we, record. He's all he's he's had on a in a press conference. He's like, I know I can't command Trayvon Diggs money because he has all the picks. I don't have those picks. I get it right. Mm-hmm. I know I can't go command that money. I want what I'm due though. I want what's fair to me. I am a number one corner in this league. Like I don't think I don't think that part of it is up for debate. So if he's already publicly said. I'm not trying to go get a hundred million from these people. Then, how? And we're, and we're talking about they're not even close. So how far? Like where are you at? If he knows he's not here, so he's thinking he's here, and you still aren't close. Then where are you on this thing? Right? Where where, where are the bears on this thing? To me, four for sixty sounds like a fair place for them to be. He, around 15, 16 million, even oh. cool. Oh my god. <laughs> I think that's a fair place to be. <laughs> Adam's thrilled. Um, I mean, I think the best I can do right now is, is switch seats. Is switch seats. <laughs> I mean, to those who are listening to the podcast, we got to get the laptop. Oh, your laptop's fine. Mine was out in the pouring rain the other well, day. Well, we got to take care of the laptop before that thing goes down. <laughs> to those listening to the podcast, Mark uh, Carmen, I just feel like. A you didn't just water. spill a decent <laughs> amount of water. You just chucked an entire You're cup of water. Twelve ounces of water, right oh on to Hope's lap. Your water and lap. You don't See, I told you on. we had Mark. We had Carm on the trade market yesterday. You didn't get rid of him, <laughs> and now look. <laughs> that didn't even happen. Oh. I tried to trade him to I Siberia, mean, and. You know, now now come here comes stuck by with the P. I mean, <laughs> you, there's clearly a lid for that. You go yeah. ahead. That thing. It's yeah. water. Uh, You'll be fine. I'm moving over. You, you hear people. You yeah. hear people talking about. Come you know, on over here, Lukey. Talking about 20 mil a year for Jalen. I don't think he's. I don't think he's asking for that. Yep. So, yeah. So you know. what's what's I'm, with, I'm just saying. I, I, this like, guy. Like we, we, we can lot. talk about speculating where we think he is or is not asking for, but I don't think he's asking for 20 million. Again, that's that's the Trayvon Diggs money, and he's already said he knows he can't command that based on what, ball production. What, what, what do you What do you think the right payment for for this is this this faux pas? I told you somewhere around four four no. sixty four. No no, no 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 no. This, oh, this this yeah. What what what? My favorite part is how. There, there's that little in between moment where Hogue is like, I can't believe this faux pas just happened, and I'm like pissed, right? He's, there's, there's that little in between where he's like, oh, Carm being Carm, and he's like, no, I'm really, I'm really pissed. So when he comes back, I'll be interested to see where that has landed. Pissed yeah, and oh, wet. He was pissed. Yeah. Is was, there anything worse uh, than wet pants? That's not seriously good. like wet, wet jeans. Socks. Wet, wet, so- wet socks are worse <laughs> than right. wet pants. But You're it's right. close. I mean, it, yeah. it, it was it like it, it, when he walked off. It was clear that it, it it got into spots that just really didn't need to get into. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you spill Clip like that off. it was like you got it seriously all over him when like everywhere it wasn't even. And I'm sure there's a little backwash in there. That. So when he comes back, I'm going to tell him that his yeah. saliva, that your it's saliva, is in places on him. I don't know if he's coming. He'd rather back. not have your saliva. It could, it could be an I ending. I think he just quit. So what's wrong? <laughs> what's wrong with you? <laughs> Yeah, what is wrong with What you? is wrong oh, with you? A lot. Go, my, the my last, first the guess last three would be, shows I've seen you guys do, uh, he's run off the set twice to pee, to do no his pee pee-pee. today. Now and today, throw. he just I'm pours happy. water all over the host. Yeah, he's, that's bad he, job. He's, he's, he's going to relieve some fluids one way or the other. <laughs> I mean, it's like in Con, <laughs> it's like in con I mean, where he's like, what's wrong with this dude? And he's like, my first guess would be, a lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah. What well, a film that is. Connor is great. Nick Cage was on a so heater it's, it's back a, then. It's a yeah, learning it moment that you just so can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. <laughs> this is, 
This is a no longer a thing. I don't. There is no lid for this thing, so that's that's part of the issue. But you know, um, that is hilarious. These things, you know, it's just a, it's just a bad moment. You really and, and shouldn't have water anyway, with the amount of times you pee. No, on the show. That's no, that's no, part not, of the problem. No, no, no drinking allowed. What what happens, right. what happens if I have a problem with my throat? You get a know? lozenge. If lozenge. you've got too yeah. many Speak problems, the you're the problem. Yeah. There you go. Speak with a lot. You know, I did uh, it last week. Q Harlan Hulk says. halfway to Howard right now. Uh, we're setting up a Hogue versus Carm charity boxing match with the water toss. Is that? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Hogue, no doubt. Here he comes. <laughs> yeah, that's. He's coming back. I'm gonna get, get the microphone. I mean, I think it's him. like. Look at his face. He's, he's gotta got to walk. He's got to <laughs> walk around like he did. He's, uh, uh, he's a got. He's got that face, and he's got that <laughs> wet <laughs> pant look. Oh, it's oh, it's how, down I there. I just don't know how the I mean, water got there. It's like cracked because he was sitting down, and water travels. I mean, yeah. it was, it's, oh, it's all over. You ever had a leak in your house it, it, and it, 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 it ends up way away too? from like the bathroom? It's it's a it's this it's one great. of my worst moments of all time. If he were a lineman in a game, I and would that's think tough. He soiled oh, that you is. You guys tough. see what this is? That's a lid. <laughs> this a is top. called a top. It's a lid. <laughs> but damn. And yeah. for how many shows for over a oh, year now? To pee. You have done this I've been, show. I've been so good. But why don't you put a lid on it? It doesn't have a lid. Then why don't you get one that has a lid? I need a lid. Yes, I've been telling you this. Uh, yeah, no, it's a bad job. Um, for the record, the only reason why I got up, I want this on the record, because I would have stuck this out to complete the show, but you crushed my computer with that water. Oh. And that was what I was worried about, because, you know, it's not like this is a cheap... There's still a little water. I actually... You know what I just did? I put this in the uh, hand dryer in the bathroom. I mean, I'm so happy that you fixed that thing because that would have been an expensive moment for Carl. Well, I'm not saying that it's. Com- we'll see. Yeah, no. We'll, we'll see we'll, if like later tonight got- the thing explodes on me. Um, Good computer. I, my, but my, yeah, my, my ass is very wet right my now. My apologies. You'll you'll be getting something from me. Um, you know, for Christmas the, on the on the upper end. You should get yourself a, just a lid for your. Well, we'll do that. I don't want a present. I want a lid for (laughs) your mug. New mug coming. That every single day I say this thing, and that was just your hand. That wasn't even. I I don't even know how that even happened. Well, good thing it's on tape. We'll figure it out. Yeah, it was great. We can review it. Braggs is having a great time over there. I loved it. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't fuck up. (laughs) <laughs> somebody, somebody else, like, did. Somebody else I mean, did it I had the greatest day ever in here yesterday yeah. like now I, gotta, the, I gotta get out of here uh, uh, I do feel bad for the, whoever's doing the shows after us Because now two chairs are wet Yeah, <laughs> We'll be okay yeah. This one feels super dry No it doesn't It kind of does no. Herb left the show too? Where did Herb well, go? It takes 41 minutes to get to Hallis Hall You're going? Uh, no they won't let me in uh, <laughs> Ryan Pohl speaks in an hour. Well, if Herb 15, needs to get there, he should go. An hour and fifteen minutes. It takes. It says on my maps, forty-one what? minutes okay, right now. Hold on, let me let me just go around the corner. What's your? If you were there, what's your first question to Ryan today? Why doesn't Carm have a lid on his water? Okay, after that, <laughs> um, do you have a culture problem in your coaching staff? Okay. My first question is th- th- that that's. I mean, I don't even so that he can't. He can't do what Flus did and like make it more about the overall culture with the players. Like he answered that question, like he was talking about the players. Mm. It's like no, <laughs> it, it, yeah, and you got to understand that. Like you want the cultures to overlap and align, but the reality is that the coaches are in the building way longer than the players are. They spend way more time together. I'm not saying things rub off on one another, but it's like you know, uh, do you have? A culture problem in your coaches, Dev. I think it's a completely fair question. Also, do you have another MacBook Pro I could yeah. borrow? Well, I no, I, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out what he how he's going to answer that question. Like, what do you think he's going to say to that? Well, he's going to say no because what right. I mean. But I, I I I look. If we've learned one thing about these about Ryan Poles and Maddie Reflues, Ryan Poles handles himself. It, yeah. When the when the Ryan Poles press conferences are over, you feel much more confident about the direction of the organization than when you do when the head coach has to handle these things. That's a fact. He's a little bit more, here's what's going on, right? And here's what needs to happen. So I think he would probably answer that question and say, listen, anytime you have two issues like we've had, it's not a good thing, right? It's not a good thing. We need to be better. We need to have more oversight we need to be more judicious on our vetting process or whatever it is um i don't think he'll just come around and say yeah we got an issue but he will acknowledge that we need to do better and, and that's where i think flus i kind of like the seat in this angle we might have to work on this 
Um, this is where I think Flus. That's a good point guard seat. I really do. This is this is solid. This is like the Ernie Johnson seat. You know, he's in mm-hmm. the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you're. You I, are Shaq. I, I, I do like you. Yeah, right I want. Does that I make want, me Chuck. Jeez, so you sit here. I'm Kenny Smith. I like being in the middle. A little <laughs> you more. are definitely not Kenny Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you are, but you're not Kenny. You Smith. are I'm, Charles Barkley I'm for Chuck. sure. <laughs> uh, it's, that's an easy one. I'm Chuck. <laughs> um. You just Barkley'd yourself. The greatest guy in all of television. But okay, yep. we're going to allow it. <laughs> of course you think that. <laughs> last night was, they had some good cuts last night. <laughs> um, lost my train of thought, obviously. Oh, Floos. Yeah. I just, he kind of finally today took some accountability. A little. But it was almost like because he had to. Because it's like he had no way out. Yes, if uh, two of my coaches from the same coaches, yes, ultimately that does fall on the head coach. I just, he, he, just one time I want to be like, yeah, obviously, like, this is something I've learned from. And the next time I go about hiring head coaches, like, we're going to have to look at some different things. We're going to have to look at the things that fell through the cracks here. Even if they're things, I think, to what some of your point, like? brags that you were talking about earlier, look, we're all dealing with human beings here. Right. And humans are going to have demons. Sure. We are not a great species. No, we're the worst species right. l- l- ever. What are they gonna, you know, what, what's he going to say? Planet. All right, give me your phone. <laughs> Right, can I go through every picture you've ever sent Let me to any see your single search person in Let the world? Let me see you know, your like searches. Some of this point, to your point, <laughs> some of it is unrealistic, but there also has to be a vetting uh, um, of, of uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, you you can't have this. The bottom line is you can't have, have this happen twice in one season. It just can't happen. You just can't. Uh, I mean, it's if you're if you're Ryan, you are. I would think you're extremely embarrassed. You haven't won, you've won five games. You're it's not going well, man. You, you 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 are in the news all the time. Seemingly, your head coach. That would be an interesting question. I mean, apparently nationally, you're not in the news at all, unless it's you doing something stupid. <laughs> that was a funny answer. You yeah. don't get a pass yeah. for this year. Everybody gave you a pass for last year. Tanking. You're getting rid of contracts. Right. No problem. I don't care if they end up with one and two this year. You don't get a pass for it. That was not the plan. That was not how this season was supposed to go. We were talking minimum seven wins, minimum six wins, right? Six, seven wins. Some people were up around 10, 11 wins for whatever reason. But, like, this was not the plan. So I don't care if you end up with one and two and you end up with Caleb Williams and Marvin Harris. You don't get a pass for that. What's your question today? My question today is you just gave up. A second round pick, it's very likely it's trending that's going to be between 35 and 40, right? Second round pick, overall pick. What is your window for signing this guy, right? Hogan's already laid it out. Everybody understands we can put the tag on the guy. Right. So you got him for at least a year if you want him. Is that what you're falling back on? Do you plan to get him signed? And how do you plan to help him? In terms of putting things around him, you can't just have him out there. Right. I don't like, care if it's are, Julius Peppers or not. In this defense, you need other guys on that defensive line. Well, I think are we learned you, that are, with the other guys they've signed. That look, they're not getting anything out of. He's going from Washington money. where they had two defensive tackles that they paid. That were dogs. You're not helping these D. You can't help on the DNs. All three of your interior linemen must deal with Allen and Payne. Well, but, that, but that's what I'd ask him is, are you prepared to offer Montez Sweat a contact, contract – extension right now or is there an evaluation process that needs to take place well and, and here's because my why would you to trade that. for him unless you already believe in that him? i agree with that i agree with that like and that was sort of i think what was flawed about the claypool thing last year but at least claypool was under contract for a year and a half right. you know if the, you give up a second round pick you better you value second round picks you you <laughs> better be willing to sign him right now and by the way second round pick if i'm montez sweat i want to sign right now because i'm looking at what you just talked about, I'm no longer playing next to those dogs in the Washington. His value is higher now than it's going to be at week 18. Correct. Like, I guarantee you. And, and, and he doesn't want to play under a franchise tag. So there, there's incentive to get this done. He has to get it done. Look, like today. Here's a, Seriously. Don't we, go to New Orleans playing with the guys you're next because, to. And then, then you have the franchise tag available to you for Jalen Johnson if that's the route you wanted to take. But look, if you, go ahead. No, I, I, well, we should uh, – we should get some of these super chats. I assume we have a lot, and it's already one twenty. Yeah, yeah. I just want—I got one question. I want you to answer. I'm asking you your pulse outside of wins this year. No comment. Outside of wins this year, what are you most disappointed in? Oh, 
That's yeah. what I would ask him. I'm, and, I, and I have no idea what he would say. It's got to be culture, man. It's the two coaching things. It's your franchise quarterback, you know, calling out the coaches and holding two impromptu press conferences in the middle of the day. Like, all these things that keep popping up. You, you hung your head last year. Okay, we sucked. Right. But we are building a foundation and a culture. And then now you bring in an influx of talent, and then the culture goes away, and the talent doesn't show up. Like, you think he'll acknowledge the culture? He has to, to some degree. He's going to get peppered with questions about it. Yeah. I, I mean, it's weird, though, because, like, do we think there's a culture problem in the locker room? I don't necessarily have a problem with the locker room. No, I don't think there's, the I mean, It hasn't been guys getting in trouble. I mean, he nope. did sign those three free agents last year that all got arrested, but that. those guys couldn't play anyway. Yeah, no, I – I mean, if I were him, I'd say I'd point – like, the I, the amount of talent that I put out out there, the guys, the guys have not stepped up and, you know, basically shown the belief that I had him. I don't know, because yeah, I think it's a good point. Like, there's a, a lot, lot to be disappointed in. Like, is the point? Yeah, I mean, and, coaching staff culture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, JV on the run here. Four ninety nine super chats. We'll get through some of these for polls. His question is: It's highly unusual to fire two coaches mid season. Why won't the Bears give us more details? The fans and the press deserve more detail. Well, he'll be better at Flus, and so when he yeah. gets when he gets those two coaches lumped together, he's going to say we didn't fire two coaches. Our DC got sick and had to go deal with his family. That's what Poles is going to say because he's smarter than Flus. Now we know that's BS, yeah. but it's the answer that he can give, and it's the one he will give. But also, like you know, what also to me is a perfectly reasonable answer is. When, for any company, especially a high-level company, yeah. when human resources is involved, we cannot comment. Unfortunately, that's the case in this situation. But we promise to the fans that we are addressing whatever faults were made here, and we will make it better in the future. I and I know that's still not a satisfactory answer, sure. but it's still better than that's all I'm going to say about it. it. I appreciate you asking that. <laughs> I was watching the press conference. I was like, Bill Belichick would have walked away by now. I told y'all. What, I was I actually told y'all I, what this is. I, I was. There was a moment where I was like, "Are we going to get our first flu snapping?" Like, yeah, I, I, I told y'all yeah. what it is. That's 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 yeah. all I'm going to say about it. Um, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Shout out to Farming Bear. Shout out to Beast Mode. <laughs> Nine eight nine. Can someone? Please ask polls where the sweat edition puts them at roster wise. Eighty five percent. I love that question. I, I actually I asked Flus. I mean, I exposed that question early at the beginning of the season. How many holes do you can you put a percentage on it? And I was absolutely floored that he actually gave me an answer, which I truly appreciated. But he was like, let's say about 75, 80 percent of holes that we fill. And I was like, OK, cool. No problem. Haven't seen the 75 to 80 percent improvement on this um, on the on the on the play. But that was his answer, and I, I I accepted it as what he truly thought, and I didn't disagree with it at the time, but it hasn't come together. And so then that begs, that begs the question, then who is responsible for the discrepancy? Well, and I hope that his answer to that only con- didn't just concern the starters because depth is clearly the big, one of the biggest issues with mm-hmm. this roster. So you can say 75 80% of the starters, but when half the starters have been out with injury, then where, you, where are you? I mean, I – I don't, I don't blame them for not being able to have depth. Sure. That's going to take a couple years, but that's clearly one of their biggest issues. I just don't know how much depth you can have in this league. Like, you talk about O-line, they haven't put the group together that we thought were going to be there yet. I mean, we thought that coming into training camp, we were like, yo, if those five guys get enough reps, they could actually field a formidable offensive front this right. year. Those five guys haven't played a snap together. Yeah. Right? You talk about Braxton, Tevin, Cody, uh, Nate, Darnell. That hasn't happened, right? And you've had all these different iterations of offensive line play, and then the secondary, let's not even get started. There's, they started a guy that I had to – in the box, I was like, who is – No, I, well, I said the same thing. Deron Harvey you're talking about? Yeah. Yes, but even two weeks before – when they won in Washington, when number 30 came on the field, I was like, yo, like where's Quindell my – Johnson? I was like, is where is my sheet? Like, right. I don't know who, Where's my training I, camp roster? I don't no. know who Joe look, Juan John, Like, I don't know these people. Look, bear yeah. or not a bear was a fun little bit we did last summer. Yeah. We should not be playing bear or not a bear anymore. During we the season. Not. I mean, we're too, uh, But we even, like, in week eight. Of year two. 
Of year two. Of year two, I'm saying. Bears like, should be identifiable like, at this like, point. Like when they got rid of half their roster and it was like, you know, last June. Okay. Like a year ago, June. Sure. This, this is this, this, this that, that shouldn't be. Yeah, this it's our job be. to know. It's not like I'm saying we don't know who Jalen Jones is or Josh Blackwell is or right. we don't know who Greg Stroman is. We know these guys. We know who Elijah Hicks is. But when you get to guys that I literally like, hold on, where is my roster? Like, this is crazy. It's wild. Um, all right. And it's begun. My mouse is being funny, Carm. I'm warning you. Um, like, Bears just put be a out a night video of All right. Montez Let, Let's just run through these. Ed Brown, 499 Super Chat. Could these uh, could these firings be a part of Kevin Warren's interviews? No, they could not, Ed. That's not, that's not what's going on. But uh, good job on Fair Kevin enough. doing all those interviews. I'm sure there will be fruits of that labor at some point. $10 from Isaac Siegel. I know this is a little... Uh, I know this is a little off this specific topic, but the other thing with Sweat is does this move entice free agents to sign here on D because we have a true pass rusher, also a Michael Scott greater than Eberflus as a boss? Well, that's easy. Michael Scott's a great that's, boss. I, I do wonder, like, would, would the Bears consider, um, hey, Chase, you want to come play here if there's, if, if there's not a lot of action on him and maybe you just pair him back up? I'll take you on. You know, I mean, it scared me there for a second. Baldy was sitting there interviewing, talking to both of them. Chase, you want to come back? Whoa, knock it off. Not, no, not, <laughs> not, not Claypool, but, but, I'm saying. I got you, young. Pa- yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I. We're, we're always reaching in the market. Like where your head's we're always at. in the market for dom- right. dominant chases. That's right. <laughs> he did dominate. They do- dominated training camp. Steven, uh, five throw dollars. That water on don't you. leave me hanging. <laughs> Water stressing me out right now. Uh, yeah, we got. <laughs> how can you? Five we got to get Hulk out of here. How can you argue this. that Sweat's numbers could go down <laughs> Just, without the running mates? But the same where's the apply to Carter if he was here. <laughs> I'm go buy it. Okay, I'll, yeah, that's I'll, a good point. It's a it's a fair point, but let fair. me explain fair, the yeah. difference. We preface that with the three technique, as defined by the head coach of this team, is the engine of this defense. You don't have one. You don't have one. Right. So that's what Jalen Carter would have been coming here to do. And so I, that's a fair question, and I get it. And I don't think that he would have the same production in Chicago that he's having in Philly. That's fair. But it's a little bit different because he was brought here to be the engine of this defense. Yeah, it's well, that's a different, what he different position. Yeah. yeah. If you guys want to go to House Hall, I'll wrap this show up by myself. Bear Forever 14. <laughs> Greg's just dying to be on the show right. by himself. You want to do it by yourself? Go ahead. Get the hell out of here. Go to Hell's Hall. I'm not going to Hell's Hall. Oh, I thought you were going. No. <laughs> Bear Forever 14, total chaos by the trade deadline. Sounds like the same old Bears again. Okay, Bear Forever. Uh, yeah. Thank you for underlining that we are in the same spot that we have been in. Bear Down Omaha, $2. My guy, what's your favorite Bears shit show moment so far? Anybody? Hmm. I can't even tell the, you. Uh, the Talk after the, It was definitely the fields. <laughs> He said what he said, and then three and then minutes he had later, he had to have that another was a good one. conference. The Claypool after the game, trying to say that they sent him or they told him not to come. And or Flus didn't those know. Flus. Yeah. That one was funnier, probably. Or no, that they left it up to him when they told him not to come. That's what it was. Yeah. That, be was my, that was pretty bad. That would be my personal favorite when he was asked by Courtney Cronin. I'm sitting there with my camera on. If they put you in a good position. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, seven seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, T fly shot along beach, uh, five dollars. Keep fields, rebuild the O line and D line. We will be fine. I'm here for it. I'm here for it, T fly. All I right. mean, that's that's all we've ever had as Bears fans. Is it, we will be fine. I would love a good O line and D line though. It's that would be it, nice. It's on the table. By the way, it is setting up nice for Justin, assuming that thumb can get healthy. Like. Saints, it's going to be a tough, tough, tough swing for 17 in the Bears offense. Come back home against Carolina on a Thursday. You're healthy. Yeah, you, you, yeah it's a good, that's a good reentry point. JV on the run, 499. We appreciate you. Ask Pose, you're allowing your hair coach to answer us directly, or are you forcing him to read a statement? Is the front office to be, being trans, being, is the front office being more transparent? Well, that was the weird thing was, well, not weird, but as soon as he got into the David Walker stuff, he was reading a statement. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. That was that was prepared and delivered to him as he walked in. Yeah. He was, he's like brags on an ad read. 
<laughs> just stumbling <laughs> through well, this. <laughs> well, do, do you think that went down? Like, I don't know how to do this. How do you want me to do this? We'll write it up for you. Just read it. Yeah. That's how that went down, yeah. right? I mean, but that's, that's also, I mean, you're talking about a billion dollar organization. That's why you have PR people. That's why you have people to write official statements. You, you're a football coach, sir. We don't necessarily need you going out here to put a statement out for the organization. It's fine. That's why that, that, those people's jobs, they should do it. Give it to them. Read it. You think Mike Tomlin needs a statement to be handed to him on how to talk about firing a running back coach? Yes. I don't think he needs a statement to answer simple questions <laughs> that, that, that get delivered in a press conference. Okay. But he's also the face of a billion-dollar organization. You don't just run people out there to go wing it. Like, nah, this is, this is our statement. Okay. Go. Okay. All right. Um, this is from Chris, this is from during the Baldy interview. So I think this is what this means. Oh, should I be worried now and had – because Herb wasn't there, and then Herb was oh. there. So. Oh, no, they've got a great thing going on with Baldy, man. I don't want to mess up that chemistry. Baldy's amazing, and what they've put together with it is phenomenal. So I appreciate you missing me. I miss you guys, too. But I was here hanging out. I was behind there just bothering Law. <laughs> <laughs> Bro Delicious, four ninety nine. I want Gary Ross on the CSGO broadcast to read Super Chats. All the diehards in Discord all agree with me. Become a diehard today. Well. I like Gary Ross. He is not a friend of, of Coach Travis. Well, I bet Smith. you Gary Ross wouldn't throw water on you. No, Gary would never. This is your chance, Gary. <laughs> you have an opening. <laughs> I would I would I would reach out with direct messages to Adam and run down. He all would the probably r- complain about the traffic getting here though. Well, cause like, Ooh, cause Gary was texting me the other day, and he's like, "You guys got to read more super chats." I was like, "Gary, there's literally 900 super chats after our post game shows. Like, we physically can't. Nah, like, I, it's it's nah. hard, and we appreciate no everyone's show. support, I, but we it, it'd be. I told him it'd be like the radio taking every single phone call that comes in, yeah, you just, or or a text message that comes in. Right, we right, just right, yeah. we have to talk we about. We appreciate what we're, it. Yeah, we absolutely appreciate you guys and the diehards. I wake up with Gary every day, so I, Gary should be good. We, we the first thing, the first thing, it's terrible. <laughs> it's 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 not terrible. It's one lovely. Who's the I, big spoon? Gary's. <laughs> Gary wakes me up. So I guess Whoa. it's Gary. Paul Josh Boyden. Delkey, 499, oh. special teams coach. Ho, can you explain the Homer five-yard running start on the punt only to get tea kettled? What was that? Hilarious to watch live. Yeah. It, it, if you guys missed this, they lined up Ho- Travis Homer, who's the uh, usually the personal protector in the punt formation, way off to the right, a line, like, as deep as the punter. It was actually more than five yards. It was more like 14 yards. And he goes – like, it's a running start, basically, in the slot. And the linebacker just comes over and pops him. <laughs> like, just, just mm. knocks him down. Is that what you're looking at on your computer that hopefully will continue to work? Montez Sweat. Yeah, watch this. We can't show. Montez Sweat just. Uh, <laughs> Sweat did what? Montez Sweat's at house hall, and he's at the podium right now. So, if you want to. Oh, so he passed his physical. And this thing and all right, Eli Sherman, four ninety nine, Flus, giving <laughs> big. Other than that, us. how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln Energy? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, wow, you guys really just ran out of steam. That's a good. That's a good ending super chat, and you guys aren't even. I don't get it. I don't get it. Other than that, how was the play, Mrs. Lincoln? Remember oh yeah, and I did see your head? dad saying in the chat oh. earlier that your uh, cousin Ashley was also in Joseph, the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, because that's what they were pl- referring to with the play. Uh, your your cousin Ashley was in Joseph too. Great in Chicago. By Don't the way, rate if you, me if you're going to a play, get your tickets on game time. <laughs> Actually, wait a minute. I do understand what he's saying there. I was confused. She okay, but the difference is, she was in the real one. They're all real. <laughs> you think we were like playing no, pretend? She was at the one that was like at the Chicago right. theater. Or whatever. Donny Osmond was the yeah. guy that played Joseph. I, I, I forget on the, the Chicago. Nah, I, wow, that's a callback. I that's an amazing reference by my dad that I co- completely forgot. Papa Hogue. Yeah. Go, 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 Joseph. Uh, far, whoa, you know can, uh, Farming Bear 999. Can Poles be asked how he feels with the way his draft picks have been developed? Yeah, that'd be fair. Uh, that right. would be a that, – that, uh, yes, he can be. Sure, but I think he would act, I don't think he would answer it affirmatively. I think that Darnell Wright has been 
Right, he's got enough. He's on. Say, he's yeah. on the right trajectory. I think he would say we've gotten eight stars out of Tyreek Stevenson or whatever. I think he'd say <laughs> we like what we've seen from Terrell Smith when he's healthy. Jaquan, Kyler, they're fine. I think. Like, I don't think. I think there's a lot to attack on his drafts. Do you regret building this defense from the outside in? Yeah, that's terrible. That's always a bad move. I've been saying that from jump. That's not what you want to do. What do you think he says to that question? I guess. Look at this, Kevin. <laughs> look at this, Kevin Kadek, our head of content in the chat. He was also in Joseph, the amazing Technicolor dream coat. I can't believe we're talking about this today. When he well, was at Drew, you're the one who keeps. We don't it have up. to. You could ignore it. I'm not ignoring our head of content. I'm going to ignore you and talk about <laughs> Joseph, the amazing Technicolor oh, dream coat show. for the next hour and a half. <laughs> And he got in because he played the oldest did brother Law, because Law. he was the tallest person in the play and couldn't sing a We lick. had such a good day yesterday, this team. This did, Law, <laughs> did Law just say, I hate this show and take off his he headset? He threw his headset down <laughs> like an angry coach. And don't said. talk about yesterday's show. You had an all-time moment that might be the most embarrassing moment that you somehow topped today. The take out my clothes moment yesterday? Yes, when you stripped <laughs> off your clothes in front of Cole Komet. his pants off right in front of Cole I, I had, saw the aftermath. I saw a photo. One of you guys tweeted a photo yes. of the aftermath oh, of his yeah. pants on the floor. And I was like, that's was weird. I saw a little bit of the great. show. <laughs> Mouse doesn't work. <laughs> still be fine. Just will be get fine. Some, can we get some rice? Put it in some rice. I need rice. some rice. Yeah, though, right? I, need a bu- I need a bucket of rice. Ay ay ay! All right. Um, should we go? I don't. I think. I, I think, think so. I, I think we I'll should. I'll be t- I'll be tweeting and a, and we'll be having. I don't think I'm, I'm going to try to speed up to Hallis and talk no, to Pose. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm going to the Apple Store. <laughs> okay. Um, well, this was a show. Give us a like if you like it. Roller coaster. Hopefully you do. Uh, at, what a day it's been. Uh, we did cover a lot today on the show. Thanks for Brian Baldinger. For coming on, thanks for Herb Howard oh, for yeah, being Baldi here. Was on. It was uh, thanks all. He, we never got Nick into the show because there's so much going on at house, but Nick's been there covering everything. Make sure you read all his work at allchshow.com. He's got a story up on uh, David Walker's firing, Montez Sweat breakdown. He's been covering it all. It's all there for you. Allchshow.com. Follow him on Twitter at Nicholas Moriano. Make sure you check out our brand new All City NFL show. It's called the All NFL Show. It is available later today. Go follow them at all city underscore NFL. Subscribe to that show as well. Really excited about having that coverage going forward. What else we got? Is that it? I think we're good. New MacBook Pros, 1800 bucks, Carm. $9.99 yep. Super Chat. Sounds about right. Drive in the bucket. No Thumbs problem. Up if you hope Adam Hogue's computer is Rags fine. Will buy it. Thumbs oh. up if you want Carm to buy him another one. Let's just not. I do have a warranty. It's called Carm's buying me a new computer. Let, let's just let's just not speak anything into existence, and we'll uh, move forward with the, go, go, with, go, with great learning lessons from today's show. I look forward to the future of nice being socks, Carm. Better. Why didn't you give us the whole yesterday? I d- didn't realize what was going on yesterday. So I don't think they're ever going to dress up as me again after today. You and your dream coat will have a good time. We all silly like the mayor.